Shalom. Okay. Thank you. She went other places. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
We're so happy, so very, very happy that you could be taking advantage of this space. Yes, thank you. One church, one Lord, yes. one Savior, yes. one faith, yes. one yes. Yes.
excited to be here and to be live. And uh, and I was going to pray, right? You know I'm an ADD, right? So John chapter 16, <laughs> that's where we're going to be in our brand new series called Ghosts. And I'm going to explain what all that means in a second. But let's thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for being with us tonight and for moving in the service, Lord. We ask that you would transform us. We ask, God, that you would help us, Lord God, to be more like you. And we thank you in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. There you go. Awesome, awesome. Well, listen, I've been excited uh, to kick off this series since probably in the midsummer when the Lord kind of dropped it in my heart for a new series. Uh, after Philippians. Now, Philippians was amazing. We had a great time. It was kind of sad to see it end, right? But uh, So we're in this series called Ghosted, and if you're new to the term of what ghosted means, how many knows what, know what I'm talking about when you say ghosted? If you know what ghosted means, all right. So some of us do, some of us don't. It's okay. I'm about to educate you right now, so hold on. When, when I explain it to you, you're going to know exactly what it is, because not only have people probably done it to you, you have probably done it to other people, all right? And I'll let me explain what that means. But ghosted is a term used when someone stops all communication and contact with you. In other words, you have a relationship with, with them, and they're just out of the blue. There's no warning. There's no apparent reason. They just re don't reply to your texts anymore. When you try to call them, they just don't reply. They don't, they don't pick up the phone. They don't answer. Uh, you just get, it goes directly, you know, uh, this call has been forwarded, right? That, that, that whole idea, it just kind of goes that way. And it could, it could be anybody. It could be somebody that you're seeing, right? You're talking to them, and all of a sudden you go out on a date, and all of a sudden you never hear from them again. That's, that's what ghosted means. Uh, it could be a family member or a friend that, that have just, for whatever reason, stopped contact with you. And today they call that being ghosted. It's almost like the person has become a ghost in your life. And so that's what this is about. Now, if you think I'm about to have a relationship, a relationship series, I am, but not the way you think. All right? Because normally in, in October, we also do a, a series that has something to do with the Holy Spirit. And so what I want you to start thinking is, how does this relate to my relationship with God? And I'm going to get there in a second, but I'm just giving you kind of a sneak preview so you understand where I'm going. I don't want to lose you on the first night of our first time meeting at 6 o'clock. I know. All right? So, so, so listen. So I read an article. Yes, I know how to read, and yes, I read articles. And I read an article on November 27th. It was a November 27th, 2015 Psychology Today article. And this is what it says about uh, ghosting, what happens, how people feel when they get ghosted. People who ghost are primarily focused on avoiding their own emotional discomfort. And they aren't thinking about how it makes the other person feel. So if you're here tonight and we start to dredge up some old memories of how it made you feel, I'm really sorry that you, that, that's happened to you. Listen, I've been ghosted. I have family members that still ghost me today. And I'm still asking the Holy Spirit to help my heart. Yeah, my heart because you know how that can make you feel when people just stop talking to you, especially if you have a relationship. Now, let me kind of bring it, break it down just a little bit more for you. Um, ladies, maybe this has happened to you a little bit more than you think, you know, uh, in our society today, maybe, maybe you've ghosted somebody and maybe for good reason, you know, you go on that date app, you, you're talking and all of a sudden you decide, hey, maybe we should meet, right, and so you're going to meet, you go out to a public place where you feel safe and you want to get something to eat and you're hoping he's going to pay for it, amen, right, so that's, that's where, where you're kind of going with it, and yet after, you know, you just know that it's just not a good relationship, it's not going to work, right, we ain't going to make it, right, and so, so what happens is after you leave, Right? You you either do two things you you cut him out completely just you just block him from your phone or you just give him a new name get behind me Satan and so whenever you, <laughs> whenever it comes back to you that yeah, get behind me Satan's calling you know who's talking you're talking about and you say no get behind me Satan right especially if you went the wrong way you've ghosted people before if you've ever had a bill collector call you you've ghosted people before come on I know you have right where all of a sudden remember what call. What do you do? You ghost them. It's as if you don't just, I do not know her. Oh, I'm going to be honest with you. You know what I've ghosted lately? The census lady. How many of you have ghosted the census lady? 
lady. They're just, I ain't home. I don't want you to know who I am, right? There's, there's just something about us being also from New York. We don't trust anybody. I ain't giving you my information. Get out of here, right? So, I mean, we know how that feels. And what does that mean? It means that we've ghosted the census lady. Now, I think the census is probably important. So you go online and you can do it. Probably, I'm not saying that, but don't ghost people. I ghosted her, but don't, don't follow what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> so we've all ghosted people before. And again, if you've ever been ghosted, then it leaves you asking the question, why did this happen? Like, why is and a lot of times we never ever get those answers. So, so you know, we're going to ask God as, as we open up the scripture, we're going to ask God to help us with our emotions, especially if we've got some hurt in there. You know, the Holy Spirit can heal every place that we hurt, and we know that. And so we want to ask God um, uh, to, to help us. And I want you to think about this. We're talking about relationships with physical people, but what about spiritual ghosting? I want you to think about this. Uh, what about when God's trying to get your attention? And you don't reply. What what happens then? You know, and, and for the record, for the record, officially, you can't really ghost God. You understand? You can't ghost yeah. somebody who's all knowing, everywhere present, right? Yeah. And and all powerful. You just cannot ghost somebody like that. But people try to ghost. We say, how do how do people try to ghost? God. Well, they try to ghost God because they try to live, they live their lives as if God doesn't exist. That's ghosting, right? How do people try to ghost God? Well, people hear God speak but refuse to reply to Him. That's called that's called ghosting. Uh, people have an intimate relationship with God, but then all of a sudden something happens and they break that relationship off with God. That's ghosting. So that's what this series is about. This series is about our hearts and how we are supposed to uh, connect with the Holy Spirit, with God, with, the, with, with Christ the Son. And, and listen, we're all, we can all get better at this relationship. Would you say amen to that? We can all get better. So that's what we're talking about. And, and here's the deal. We're tonight, we're kicking off our 21 days of prayer and fasting. This is the perfect time yeah. for us to say, God, I want, I want more of you. I want, to, I want, I want, I want everything you got for me. I want to open up my heart to you, God. If there's areas in my life where I'm not replying, help me to reply. In fact, today's message is called "It's Time to Reply." It's time to reply. So let's dive into John chapter 16 and and uh, just to kind of set the, the, the context. For you, Jesus is getting ready to go back to the cross. He's actually having what's called his final discourse, which you can really find in um, John 13, 14, 15, 16. Those that's like right in those areas. Jesus is speaking, he's teaching, he washes feet, he does all those things. And in John 16, he's letting them know, he's trying to encourage them that he's got to go away. And and that, but it's good that he goes away. But they don't understand that it's good because He's basically telling them, I'm not going to be with you anymore. And it's making them really, really sad. And so when we look at this, verse starting in verse 5, I'm going to read to you just a, a couple of uh, verses here, starting in verse 5. But now I am going to him who sent me. This is Jesus speaking. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. See, God knows how you feel. And so he, he knows that his disciples are sad. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, we, they don't understand that, but here, hindsight, right? We're looking back. We understand that it was to our advantage that Jesus went away. We understand because Jesus was here. He could only be one place at a time, right? He could he could only meet with, with so many people at one time. But what he's saying here is that when he leaves, he's sending the Holy Spirit who can be everywhere all the time. Right. Understand? It's an advantage that if Jesus was here tonight, if he was here in physical form, first of all, there'd be a line all the way out the door. People would be packed in here to see him, right? Yeah, right. But he can really only meet with one person at a time. You understand that? Yeah. So, so he says, it's to your advantage. We have, you have an advantage that, that the disciples didn't even have at this moment with Jesus in front of them. 
I'll get back to, to more, more to that, but I want you to hear that and understand there's an advantage that we have. What is that advantage? He says it. He says, it's your advantage I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper, everybody say helper. The helper will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Verse 8, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Verse 9, concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you. That was That's an amazing thought. And he still had so many things to say that he couldn't really even get it all out before he went to the cross. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. How much truth? Whoa. All truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has given, all that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Would you say amen to the word of God? Let me break this down real quick. Kind of like this. God, think of it like this. God just texted you. God just sent you a text message just now. In fact, this is the primary way God is going to text message you. You know what I'm saying? Right? So he just sent us a text message. It's time for us to reply. It's time to reply. So in our text, let's look at real quick. And in our text, um, Jesus tells us that the Holy Spirit is our helper. Now that word helper in the Greek it's translated in some of your Bibles as advocate. It's translated in some of your Bibles as comforter, as counselor. It's really the Greek word parakletos. Parakletos. And it means one who is called to one side, one who pleads another's cause before a judge. Almost like a defense attorney would come alongside of you and plead your case yeah. before the judge. That's what the Holy Spirit of God does. He's an advocate who helps on our behalf. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes alongside of us and helps us. He leads us into all truth. Yeah. If there's any truth in your life, the Holy Spirit of God is the one who oh, leads so you. Yeah. Listen, you cannot even have a relationship with God unless the Holy Spirit of God draws you into yeah. uh, God's presence. Yeah. You, 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 we cannot do that. It's his job. He's the one who makes the scripture jump off. All at you. If you've ever been reading the scripture and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I have an aha moment. It's like the light bulb went out. It's not that you just got smarter. It's that the Holy Spirit of God has just illuminated that for you. He's turned out the light bulb for you right then, right there. That's how you understand it. The Holy Spirit of God also prays for me. He counsels me. He comforts me. He's my help. I can't do anything without him. Someone said, do you need the Holy Spirit all day long? Bro, I need the Holy Spirit to get me out. The yes, door in the yes, morning. Yes. I need the Holy Spirit in my yes. life. I can't do it. You need the Holy Spirit just to go to shop right. <laughs> you know you do. The Holy Spirit of God is our helper. And if you know him, he wants your relationship with him to be closer. He wants to speak to you. And if you don't know him, if you're watching online and you don't know him, got to remember we have a camera. If you're watching online and you don't know him, it's our prayer that you will know him, the Holy Spirit of God. So let's break this down. He's our comfort. How many people like a nice comforter on a cold day? Yes. Right, especially now that the weather's yes. getting cold. The comforter, the comforter. You know, um, one time Pastor Cindy bought a new comforter, or it was kind of like those throws. I call it a comforter because it, everything gets amazing. You know, guys think very much like that. It's a blanket. It's a comforter. You know, we don't think in colors outside of red, yellow, blue. Don't be talking about maroon. Don't be talking about mauve. I have no idea what mauve is. All right. Don't tell me what peach color is. I don't know. All right. So there was a blanket, and I came home. Now, one of the things I love to do after preaching on Sunday is to come home, put on, especially during football season, put on the, the 
the, 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 the football game, and uh, you've got that kind of Holy Ghost hangover. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just kind of, you're all about it, and that's all you got to give to gave it all. And I like to kind of get into something comfortable and lay on the couch for a comfortable. And I'm not watching that football for maybe two or three minutes when I'm out like a light. That's just, I just go out <laughs> like a light. So one time, one time, I, I lay on the couch, just the same scenario that I showed you. I came over, and my wife comes home a little bit later, and she sees me laying in the couch. I'm I said, I don't know. <laughs> she looked at me wrapped up in this new, new throw, and she's like, what were you thinking? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm as shocked as you are right now. I got no idea what's going on. How stupid of me. Did you guys, did you ever notice that your wife can make you feel like a four-year-old? Oh. Just like that. Just like that. What were you thinking? I got no idea. I got no clue. Can you help me out? Can I get a bottle? Can I buy a bottle? And 
I was invited to a church, and they had the altar time, right? And and uh, as I was walking out of the, I didn't respond to the altar. I was too proud to respond to the altar. I ain't going up there. And as they were leaving, the band was playing, everybody was smiling. I was dying inside. My heart was pounding. I was sweating. I was like, what is going on here, right? I could just feel the Holy Spirit's conviction so strong. It was like he was just texting me, Mike, you got to apply. Mike, you hear that, Mike? And he was just going out in my mind, going out in my mind. And, and, and I could hear him, you, you know that you lied. You know that you cheated. You know that you stole. You know that you've broken God's commandments. You know that thing. And, and, and it was like, it was like the Holy Spirit was just throwing scripture at me. Isaiah 59 verse 2. It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins he has turned away and will not listen anymore. It was like you heard, it was like you heard the preacher when he said in Romans chapter 3 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not one person is, is righteous. Not one person. And that all the good things we do. Every good deed that we think we can do. Isaiah 7 chapter in Isaiah 64, that we're all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy yeah. rags. Like autumn leaves, that's where we are now. Autumn leaves, we wither and fall in our sins. Sweep us away with the wind. But that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit had a plan from eternity past to rescue yeah. us from our sinful ways. And Jesus said in John chapter 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. I am happy that you're saved today. Yeah. And it was like the Holy Spirit was convicting me, convicting me, and I had come to church with my uncle, and right there in the parking lot, on a nice sunny day, I turned around to him and I said, Uncle, I think I was supposed to go up there. And he goes, yeah, you were. <laughs> Don't just love your family that's trying to see you saved. Aren't you excited when your family gets saved? Yeah. And he said, you don't have to go up there. We're going to do this right now. And right in the middle of a church parking lot with happy church goers leaving, I gave my life to Jesus and I've never, never, ever left that. I remember what it was. And that was a work of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit convinces us of sin. He convicts us of sin. Number two for your notes. Write this down. The Holy Spirit um, what is it? <laughs> oh, the Holy Spirit convicts us of righteousness. He convicts us of sin. He convicts us of righteousness. Listen to what Jesus said. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. I just want to break this down for a second. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again three days later. This is what Jesus is. Jesus is foretelling that he's going to leave. But we know Jesus, he went to the cross for our sins. He died. He was buried. Three days later, he rose again. He ascended 40 days later to the Father and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what we know and believe in. And when he did that, he completed the transaction for your sin and for mine. Everything was 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 um, all signed, sealed, and delivered in Christ. And it's as if God at that moment is saying that the righteous, this, this is the only kind of righteousness that I will accept. This is the only kind of goodness that I will accept, which is not your goodness, it's Jesus' goodness. It's not your righteousness, it's Jesus' righteous. And that's why that we are in Christ, we're called the righteousness of God. Now, I know that you know that you're bad. And I know that you know that Jesus is good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And as good as we try to be, we can never be as good as Jesus is, right? We are bad. Michael Jackson bad. Like, he, he, ha, bad. <laughs> and, and Jesus is good. 
then my scale kind of goes up, and I get closer to God, right? That's the way the world thinks. But that's not the way God was saying. God just said in Isaiah that all your good deeds are as filthy rags. There's nothing that you can do to, to be better. There's just nothing you can and so religious people, religious-minded people, and there's people that come to church every week who are religious-minded and not saved. Yeah. And they think because they came to the church or they viewed online that they just got to think about elementary school. Think about the gold, think about the chart, right? And every time you do a good deed, they put a gold star on the chart. Good job. You took your coat off. Good job. You put your lunch pail away. Good job. And listen, they, they do this to try to teach the children. But listen, when they do something bad, they get this thing called a demerit. You know what the demerit? How many kids are they t- petrified that they get a demerit? Because that gold star is now taken off, and they're like, I had a star. Yeah. What happened? And they go, they go through this whole thing. That's what we, that's how we treat our goodness with God. Mm. Like, that's how we treat our righteousness. Every time we do something good, we think God's like, good for you. Good for you. But the idea is, is that, that we're fooled because we can never be good enough apart from Christ, outside of Christ. And so the Holy Spirit of God convinces people that they're not good, convinces people that they're not righteous. But I want to say this because you know, man, a I'm always being, I'm always being reminded that I'm a sinner, and I'm always being reminded that I'm not good. Well, in a way, but think about it like this. The Holy Spirit also reminds you, get this, that you're still safe. Right? Like that thing that you said when you were stuck in traffic on 95 and you swear you just lost your salvation, the Holy Spirit of God reminds you that, hey, don't worry, Jesus' blood covers that. You haven't just lost your salvation. He reminds you that you're still righteous in Christ. I thought you'd be a little bit more excited about that. Right? That He still reminds you that you are the righteousness of God. Even when you slip up, even when you mess up, even when you sin big. Yes, thank you, Lord. That we can come to Him with all life. We can come to the throne of grace and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Yes, yes. It's not by works. God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. And the devil will take that when you sin and he'll say, man, see that? That was the last straw. God is not going to forgive you this time. And we even play that out. We have that on speed dial sometimes. We go way back. We, some of us can't get past our past. The Holy Spirit of God, listen to me, listen to me. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict us. You know what it means to be convicted? It means you're guilty. It means you did. Condemnation means you're going to, you're going to death row. There's a, there's a big difference. The Holy Spirit of God convicts us, but he doesn't condemn us. Listen, Romans 8, 1. There's there now for no condemnation for those who are what? In Christ Jesus. So think about it like this. You, 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 have you sinned? Yeah, yeah, you've sinned, right? Um... Uh, have you what is this? Have you sinned since you've been saved? Yes. It's not a trick question. Yes, it is. When was the last time that the Holy Spirit had to convince you that you're still saved? Yeah. He convinces you of, of righteousness. Listen, John 1, 1 John uh, chapter 1 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and can cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The Holy Spirit's trying to tell you that in Jesus, you're righteous. You're made righteous. He's trying to convince you, just like the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. He's trying to convince you that you're still saved. Right. So don't walk around like that. Repent and keep it moving. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what I'm Conviction is a good thing. Yeah. Sometimes we need convincing that we're still forgiven by Jesus, that we're still his son, that we're still his daughter. He's not a kind of father that can Son yeah. to die for 
for that. When was the last time you looked at it like that? That the Holy Spirit was texting you to say, hey, stop the pity party. You're still in the family. Someone needs to hear that. So he convicts us of sin. He convicts us of, of righteousness. And the last one for you to notice is this, is he convicts us of judgment. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Just like he convinces us that we need to be saved. Just like he convicts us and convinces us that we're still saved and we're the righteousness of God in Christ, not on our own. He convicts us and lets us know that there is a judgment coming. He convicts the world of judgment. And here's the thing. Just kind of lay it out on the line for you. If, you've, if you're ghosting the Holy Spirit on the first two text messages about sin and righteousness, if you keep ignoring that, and you keep ignoring that, and you keep doing things your own way, there will be a consequence that every person must pay. And that consequence is judgment. And that's what... What Jesus is saying here. If you miss the if you miss the, those text messages and you keep thinking that your righteousness is on your own and that you're a good person, you don't need no religion, you don't need no capitalism, you don't need no blah 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 blah. You can do that. You can keep God will allow you to keep doing you, to keep you live your whole life the way you want to do it. But at the end of your life, there is a bill that needs to be paid. And that's what he's saying here. He's saying that the, the Holy Spirit of God is reminding people, convicting people, that there is a judgment that's awaiting. Now, and, uh, and this, this judgment is meant for Satan. It's meant that Satan lost at the cross. Yes. Satan was defeated at the yes. cross yes. of Christ. Yes. He's already been yes. judged. Yes. He's already lost. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out? And so Jesus beat him 2,000 years ago on the cross. And Satan has already been judged. And get this, he can no longer hold you in bondage. He can no longer keep you kicking down. He can no longer keep you under his feet. In fact, you by the blood of Christ can keep him under your feet. Because of what Jesus has done. The Holy Spirit is trying to convince you. Get this. You have authority in Jesus to tell that devil to go to, you know. Yeah. That's where he came from. Yeah. And this is only found in Christ. He's sending you the text message. And so tonight, if you don't remember anything that I said tonight, remember this because it's going to build that over the next couple of weeks. Don't ghost the Holy Ghost. Don't ghost the Holy God. The Holy Spirit of God is trying to connect with you. And there is a judgment that's coming. If the worship team can't come back up, please. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Do you understand? Amen. You laughed, you cried, you sang. It's been a good night. Don't ghost the Holy Ghost. I just want to say for our online audience tonight that we're going to give you a, a, in a second, we're going to give you an opportunity to, to, to stay with us. We're going to give you an opportunity to, to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior if you've never done that. And that's so important to us. That's why we exist here as a church, is one of the things we want to do is reach people who are far away from God. And so that's every single one of us. But for those of us watching online, for those of us in the room tonight, just think about this. Are you replying to the Holy Spirit when He tests you? When you do sin, when we sin, are you quick to say, you know what? I'm sorry, I repent of that. And keep it going, and keep it moving. You dwell in that. And Holy Spirit is just trying to connect with you tonight and say, listen, though your sins are many, 
They're washed as white as snow because of the blood of Christ. Maybe tonight, maybe tonight that's your reminding that, that you are saved. You do love Jesus. He loves you. He died for you. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you tonight? So as we as we ask that question and we ponder that question, Christian, here tonight, maybe you need to be reminded that you're forgiven. <laughs> that you're made new in Christ. You're a new creation. Yeah, you're a work in progress, but God loves you, and he's working with you, and he's walking with you. And as soon as the Holy Spirit checks you in something, it's always a good idea to say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to keep moving with you. And even if you do it again, guess what? There's grace and there's mercy at the cross of Christ. You've got to believe that. Don't ghost the Holy Ghost. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not a Christian. Maybe you're watching online and you're not a Christian. You've never given your life to Christ. I would say don't ghost the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to reply to that text message. He's trying to get your attention because he loves you. He's not He's not going to force you to do anything, though. Like a gentleman, he's waiting. He's waiting for you to reply. And I'm going to say this. It's your, it's your sin that keeps you away from him. He's letting you know today that Jesus already paid the price for that sin. He already bought your salvation with his blood on the cross. He's already signed that check with his own blood. He'll let you reject it, but he doesn't want you to. A lot of times people will say, well, how can a good God, a loving God, send people to hell? And my response to that is God doesn't want to send anybody to hell. Hell is reserved for Satan and demons. That's what it's at. But if you continue to reject the Holy Spirit, if you continue to not reply and ghost the Holy Ghost, then one day, I said earlier, there's a bill that's waiting for you. And although Jesus offered to pay for it through your whole life, you rejected that. And when you stand before a holy God on judgment day, he's going to look down and there's going to be a signature that needs to be signed. And it's your signature because you rejected Jesus. God doesn't want that. God doesn't want that. So if you'd say right now, Pastor Mike, I want to know Jesus. I want to, I repent of my sin. You can just, you can connect with us online. Connect that connect card. We will get back to you this week. But before we do that, I want to pray. And then Pastor Barbara's going to lead us in communion real quick. We're going to go through communion. We're going to worship with our communion. And we always, you say, oh, I have an offering. No, listen, offering is now touchless. So on your way out, if you have your offering, you drop in the basket. On the way out, which is also, as we found out last week, worship to God. But I want to take care of this right now, so pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask that you would open up our hearts. It's, Lord, that you would open up our hearts, open the eyes of our hearts, open up our ears, Lord God. Father, that we would reply even now. Lord, there's people even now watching, God, who know that they are not right with you. They know, Lord God, like they know their own names, that if something were to happen to them and they were to leave this life, they are fairly certain they're not going to be standing with you in eternity. But God, you sent your heart your one and only son to die for that sin. And so right now, if you'd say, Pastor Mike, I want to know like I know that I'm saved. Just ask Jesus right now, save me. Save me, Lord. I open up my, my heart to you. Save me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I turn to you. In Jesus' name.
Let's just, oh, we thank you, Lord. There's just something about being in the presence of the Lord. I mean, the building is not what's important, but I just want to say this because I'm here and I know that some of us are feeling very emotional because we're here together. And even though it's a building, it's just the beauty of being able to worship together. And we're grateful for that. Lord. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. How many of us know that there is power in the blood of Jesus? How many of us know that the blood of Jesus covers a multitude of sin? How many of us know that the blood of Jesus will eradicate this virus? How many of us know that the blood of Jesus is going to see us through every circumstance, every valley low? Every sickness that we may face, every hurt, every pain, the blood of Jesus will cover us. How many of us know that the day we face our Father, it's the blood of Jesus that's going to allow us to enter into the gates of heaven. It is the blood of Jesus that brings us here. Hallelujah.
broken and said, this is my body.